From Amateur Radio Newsline, report number 2309, this is Ham Nation Headlines for Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. Our top story this week takes us to the struggling island nation of Tonga, which is still cut off from the world following back-to-back -back natural disasters. Hams continue to keep a watchful eye. Efforts have been ongoing to restore communications to Tonga, where an undersea volcano left a vital fiber optic cable broken beneath the ocean, isolating the island nation. According to a BBC report, 2G wireless service has been set up on the archipelago's main island with the help of a satellite dish from the University of the South Pacific. Other than the intermittent service of satellite phones, however, outside contact has been limited as the country struggles with a contaminated water supply and other concerns brought on by a subsequent tsunami. Tonga apparently has no active amateur radio operators and hams in the immediate Pacific region have reported that the amateur HF bands are presently unusable. Some marine VHF bands are said to be active. Meanwhile, New Zealand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs estimate it will take at least a month, if not more, before the cable can be fixed. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF. There'll be big celebrations everywhere in the UK this year for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Hams in the UK who are planning to operate this June in celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee should keep their eyes on the website of the Radio Society of Great Britain. Ofcom has granted permission for call signs to include the special regional secondary locator letter Q, but its use will require a notice of variation. The website, rsgb.org, will carry those details shortly. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is Britain's longest reigning monarch and thus the first to celebrate a Platinum Jubilee. Special use call signs have been used by hams for previous occasions, including the Queen's Golden Jubilee in 2002 and her Diamond Jubilee in 2012. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Boot, G4NJH. Our final story this week is about a changing of the guard of sorts aboard the International Space Station. After nearly six years of loyal service, Ed and Izzy have been told their services are no longer needed. European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer, KI5KFH, DP0ISS, broke the news to them recently aboard the International Space Station, where the two Astro Pi computers have operated for a half dozen years. The units comprise Raspberry Pi 4 Model B hardware, a 12.3 megapixel camera and a range of sensors. The Astro Pi units are capable of uploading code submissions from two programs, Mission Zero and Mission Space Lab, both of which are used to nurture students' coding skills. The new units have greater capacity than Ed and Izzy and are expected to outperform them dramatically. Now, this changing of the guard should have come as no surprise to Ed and Izzy. The ESA gave a very public preview of their replacements in September of last year, calling the replacements essential, adding that the original batteries were due to expire soon. There was no word as to whether Ed and Izzy would be given a formal farewell or even offered severance pay. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Ed Durant, DD5LP. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF, Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, Ed Durant, DD5LP, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.